Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and I'm taking a little coffee break from my newest project, which is behind me, to bring you a little video about some thrifting I've done in the past couple of weeks. I went to three different cities, places, and tried out a bunch of different antique stores. All good journeys start with fuel. This is salvage goods in Easton, Pennsylvania, which has a mix of modern, vintage, and upcycled items. Here's a projector case, which is a similar size and shape to a typewriter case, so it never hurts to go and check. I love running into items like this. These are all different letter forms, which you can use in a variety of ways. Originally, they would have been used for printing or sign making. And of course, I had to check the keys. I think this one might actually be a Smith Corona key. I've been trying to get better at identifying ceramic and dishware brands. This one is Fire King, which I can tell from the finish and design. Once again, more canister sets. I believe this is a tool for adding grommets, but it did sort of look like a keycap remover from a distance, so it never hurts to check. I wasn't expecting this, but as I turned the corner, I hit quite a few typewriters. So here's a Smith Corona Galaxy 12, probably from the late 60s or 70s. We also have a few Remingtons and Royals and another Corona. I got stuck here for a bit resetting all of these machines and examining this Hermes rocket. I have never seen a Hermes machine in real life, so it was really interesting to stumble upon one in the wild. It's not super common where I am. And on this Remington 6, I saw this really interesting ribbon mechanism, which seems to have a big ribbon that rolls from the sides. After examining the other typewriters, which were all out of my price range, I stopped to check the tool section. You never know when you might run into a typewriter tool. Ever since I started looking for refrigerator dishes, I've been keeping my eye on Pyrex. It's a hot market right now with prices constantly climbing. I personally haven't found a pattern I love just quite yet, but I do like learning more about them. Here we have autumn wheat and a butter print. With those finds in mind, I left Easton ready for my next thrift trip. which once again required caffeine. This time I was in Rockaway, New Jersey. The Goodwills around here can be rather hit or miss. I did run into some interesting pottery though. I've been really taken with this brown drip glaze ceramic and I've seen them everywhere. I've seen most versions by Hull and others by Flatsgraph. These two reminded me of the Dorothy Thorpe glasses. This dish looked like Pyrex to me, but it had a different shiny outside finish. Turns out it's from Fire King. One thing I always check at Goodwills is the DVD section. I like physical media, no surprise there. I found this really strange version of The Lord of the Rings, and I've recently picked up all but one of the Harry Potter series.
I also made a two Habitat for Humanity restore in Rockaway, which was really interesting. Locations like this are great for larger pieces of furniture, and this one even had an antique section. They also had this somewhat unsettling collie on the way out. Then I apparently had to refuel with a Jersey bagel, because apparently Jersey bagels are a thing. I was also able to hit a few estate sales with moderate success. before saying goodbye to New Jersey. My next stop is another Pennsylvanian town, or two. I actually started the day with a tour of the Martin Guitar Factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. They have a full museum as well as a factory where you can watch guitars being hand-built. I'm Martin Guitar and I'm obsessed with this stool instead of the guitars. Here is Attic to Basement Thrift in downtown Nazareth. This alligator purse caught my eye because I remember seeing another one of these back in Mechanicsburg months ago. And ironically, this is not a Martin guitar. Here's another canister set. And I was so taken with these little combo decanter coffee cup sets. Here's more drip glaze. If anyone knows more about this type of ceramic, please let me know down below. I'm quite taken with it. And here's another Fire King dish, just like that one we saw in Rockaway. Can you spot anything specific in this room? On the bottom shelf in the right corner was an electric typewriter case for a Sears machine. Not my style, but it was 60 and half off. One other type of thrifting I've become more interested in recently is secondhand clothing. Sizes change as does style, so I like the idea of being a bit more sustainable with my clothing purchases. From there it was off to Allentown, which is about a 20 minute drive from Nazareth. Here's the classic Cubis cream and sugar. And another Pyrex pattern. And I was not prepared for my next stop, the Wheel Antique Center. This old warehouse has over 150 vintage dealers with a variety of styles and price points.
I am still searching for the perfect jadeite cup and saucer. Canister set spotting. This little guy is a postcard holder. The salt and pepper shaker sets just keep getting more and more interesting. This set of Siamese cats I just saw at Telltale Antiques a few weeks ago. And look, another pepper pepper shaker. This stamp is actually a local piece, which I always find rather interesting. Here's another autumn wheat pattern Pyrex. Once you start spotting them, they're everywhere. And here's cubist cream and sugar. These are often listed as depression era glass, but they're not actually from the 30s. This set, however, is. This cream and sugar set is from Jeanette glass, and you can tell by the bottom pattern here, which is specific to Jeanette, and they were only open until the 30s. and typewriter spotted. Here's a typewriter desk or stand. This one is listed at 65, but I've bought all of mine for under 10. Here's a Corsair, which is the 60s Ultra Portable from Smith Corona. This place just keeps going and going and going, with each stall having a completely different aesthetic. I've been keeping my eye on Tiffany lamps and these three are gorgeous. Apparently Wheel also has clock repair and this massive collection of all sorts of clocks. It's really interesting to find places with such a specific collection like this. I also found this moose creamer, which for some reason I thought was hilarious. And even when you're tired, you check every stall because just as I was leaving, I ran into two more typewriters. And with that, it was time to head home. If you're interested in other typewriter content, I do some other videos on this YouTube channel as well as on Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching and remind you, you're just my type, writer.
Now, I gotta go pack for my next adventure. <laughs>